There are more than 20 different names for the Antichrist in the book of Revelation. He is called the Destroyer, Beast, Desolator, Son of Perdition, Wicked One, King of Babylon, among many others. And all these titles are intended to give us a small idea of his character, his personality. After all, he will be the most perverse person who has ever set foot in this world. Take Hitler, Stalin, Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, and Kim Jong-un. Combine them all and then multiply by many times. Even so, it will not be possible to come close to the terrible character of the Antichrist, because he will use all tricks and cunning to have control over the world. Everyone will be under his dominion, including wicked men. This malevolent being will only reveal himself at the end of times, but in 1 John 4, it is written that the spirit of the Antichrist has been at work in the world for quite some time. Most people still do not perceive it because they are spiritually blind, while he continues to act against the teachings of Christ, encouraging evil ideologies and leading everyone into a life of disobedience. The spirit of the Antichrist is directly linked to deception and lies, and its ultimate goal is to divert people from the true gospel. It presents to humanity a false freedom, where anyone can do whatever they want without caring about the Creator and without following his rules. As the writer C.S. Lewis says, Satan continues his efforts to make sin less offensive, heaven less attractive, hell less horrible, and the gospel less urgent. The devil also uses spiritual leaders to distort the Bible, and he encourages the persecution of Christians throughout history through governmental entities, individuals, or extremist groups, for example. Not to mention that his main focus is to attack from within the churches. Increasingly, the spirit of the Antichrist has infiltrated among Christians, causing conflicts, divisions, weakening faith, unity, and love, which are crucial in these difficult times. All of this is a preparation for the arrival of this malevolent man called the Antichrist, whom I personally believe will emerge from a very significant place, such as the government of a first world country or an extremely powerful organization of nations like the UN or the European Union. The Bible states that initially, the Antichrist will be able to unite countries and the three main religions on the planet, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, under a covenant of peace and security. This promise will come at a time when everything will seem lost, where people and nations will be desperate for a savior, someone who changes the fate of the earth and brings them a glimmer of hope. Then, with a great alliance formed, he will finally come to power worldwide and gain people's trust with his good looks, influence, and most importantly, his speech full of wisdom and meekness. He will be the most charming and admirable person in his early years of rule. God's word also speaks about the prophecy of the emergence of two beasts that will mark the beginning of the end times. The first, coming from the sea with seven heads and ten horns, is the Antichrist. The second beast, arising from the earth and causing people to worship the first, is the false prophet. He will deceive them with many miraculous signs. It is precisely this second figure that will help the Antichrist maintain political, religious, and economic control of the world through a kind of license to live that will be the mark of the beast. Only through it will people be able to buy and sell. Otherwise, they will die due to a lack of food and other basic survival items because they cannot participate in this new model of the world economy. And three and a half years later, while everyone is in relative peace, with no major conflicts around the world, the Antichrist will break the covenant he made with the nations, and the signed treaty will be annulled. That charming and peace-promoting figure will no longer exist. Now, he will reveal who he truly is, a malevolent, arrogant, selfish, and power-hungry being. During this period he will enter the Holy of Holies, the space of the Third Temple, and commit what the scriptures call a terrible sacrilege, profaning the holiness of God and declaring that, from that moment on, he alone should be worshipped. Then, an image of him will be placed there, and all the earth must bow down to him. And behold, the most ruthless leader, empowered by Satan and holding control of the entire world in his hands, will begin to act. Just as God has his trinity, Satan will also have his. He will represent the Father, the Antichrist will be the Son, and the false prophet will be like the Holy Spirit, all united with the purpose of causing the maximum harm to people. Regarding the false prophet, know that his role in this period of the Great Tribulation will be more important than one can imagine. 
In addition to persecuting and condemning those who do not bow down to the Antichrist, he will also work as a kind of prime minister in this evil government, managing all important matters, including imposing the mark of the beast on the inhabitants of the earth. Finally, the Antichrist will attack the entire nation of Israel with the goal of exterminating the Jews, just as the enemies of the Bible, such as the Philistines, Babylonians, Assyrians, Ammonites, Amalekites, Syrians, and more recently, Iranians and Palestinians have attempted throughout history but failed. However, the Bible says that then, various armies from the north, south, and east will cross the Euphrates River, and for a moment, the Antichrist will have to pause his plan to destroy the nation chosen by God to deal with these enemies that will arise along the way. And while they wage war against each other, an adversary they did not expect will arrive. The Lord Jesus Christ mounted on a white horse, full of glory and power, accompanied by his saints and angels. Those enemies who were fighting amongst themselves will unite, led by the Antichrist, to fight against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in a battle known as Armageddon. That location in Israel will be the most awe-inspiring battlefield that could exist, as what seemed to be a centuries-long war will last only a breath of time. Yes, with a simple breath, Christ will destroy all rebellious people on earth. The destruction will be so great that Revelation 19 states that God will have to call the birds of the air from all parts of the world to eat the corpses that will lie on the ground. Afterward, Jesus will destroy the Antichrist and the false prophet. He will also disarm the armies, bring down all allies, and disintegrate all evil alliances. Satan will be imprisoned in a place called Hades. Once the birds have cleaned up and all evil disappears, only those who believe in Christ and have not rebelled against him will remain on earth. The kingdom of Jesus will be established here for a thousand years. The Bible says that those of us who lived and were raptured will be with him and assist in managing what happens during the millennium. King David will be his right-hand man. In this kingdom of Jesus, everything created by the Father in the Garden of Eden but destroyed by sin will return even better. But the story doesn't end here. Physical death won't be enough for the unbelievers. God himself will sit on the great white throne and his majesty will be so powerful that the earth and the heavens will flee from his presence. Then the dead, meaning all unbelievers, both great and small, will stand before the white throne and the books will be opened. The Bible doesn't specify exactly which books these will be, but they are likely books that will bring to light their actions, choices, words, and thoughts. Alongside these, another book will be opened, the Book of Life. Those whose names are not found in the Book of Life will be condemned. But there is still Satan to deal with, who will remain imprisoned until the end of Christ's thousand-year reign. After this period, he will be released and thrown together with the Antichrist and the false prophet into the Lake of Fire, also known as the Second Death or Hell. Unfortunately, those who followed the devil's ways, denied Christ, and received the mark of the beast, will join them for an eternity filled with pain, torment, and gnashing of teeth. There will be no more time for mercy, repentance, or forgiveness. I know this is sad to say, after all, we are talking about human beings. But brothers and sisters, we have to remember that if God didn't do this, he couldn't be God. If he just stood by watching all the evil these people committed without taking any action, he would disqualify himself as a just judge. We know that God always does what is right, with love and mercy, but he also administers justice. And as people did not want to receive God's grace through his son Jesus, they will be condemned eternally. And perhaps you're wondering, Pastor, what happens next? The Bible says that a new heaven and a new earth will form and this new world will be called New Jerusalem. There, people will live forever, and there will be no sadness, pain, crying, sickness, and certainly no death. Jesus will walk by our side, just as the Lord walked with Adam and Eve in paradise. The book of Revelation contains many dark passages, but within them, there is always a sign of God's grace and mercy. He never leaves us without the opportunity to turn to Christ, even during the tribulation. The Apostle John tells us 
that the Lord will raise up 144,000 people and send two witnesses from heaven to this world full of darkness to preach about his love during the years of the Antichrist's rule. So, if anyone is not saved, it will not be because of God, but rather because of their own choices. He has done everything he knows, everything that can be done, including giving his own son to pay the debt of our sins on the cross. When I stand before God, and he asks me why he should let me into heaven, I will answer because I received his son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior and Lord, and he promised me the gift of eternal life. That is the confidence you must have when you stand before the Lord. And if you do not have that assurance yet, wherever you are hearing me now, this message is for you. Accept Jesus, surrender to him while there is still time, amen? God did not bring you to the end of this video just for you to learn more about the apocalypse, but also to tell you that he loves you very much, that Christ died for you, and that there is also an open way for you to go to heaven. You just have to want it, so don't put it off, amen? If you wish to surrender your life to Jesus right now, I want to say a prayer, and I encourage you to do it wherever you are with an open heart, saying the words out loud, Amen? Let's pray. Repeat these words with me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that you came to this world, died for our sins, and rose again on the third day. Jesus, I repent of my sins. I want to walk with you every day. Write my name in the book of life. Change my story, Lord. Erase my past and transform my heart. I believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to be with you every day. I want to be obedient to your word. I want to forgive as you forgave me. And I want to love as you loved me. Help me to be faithful until the end. In your name, Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, my dear brother, if you prayed this prayer with all your heart from today on, put into practice what you believe. If you believe in Jesus, seek to walk as he walked, follow in his ways, obey his word, and I believe that you will not be alone from now on. The Holy Spirit will be in your heart. Look for a church, seek to walk with people of faith, and don't miss listening to the messages I bring here. All of them are based on the word of the Lord, amen? If you liked it, I ask that you share it, send it to WhatsApp groups. Let's spread this important message. May God bless you mightily.